Welcome to the final part of our cardiac auscultation series. Today, we discuss murmurs. While murmurs may initially seem daunting, rest assured that with the guidance provided in this video, you will soon gain confidence and familiarity with murmurs. If you're just joining us, we highly recommend reviewing the preceding videos to ensure a comprehensive understanding of the topics covered thus far. And with that said, let's dive right into the topic. A cardiac murmur, if audible, is attributed to turbulent blood flow across the heart valves. While some murmurs are benign, commonly called innocent murmurs, they often serve as potential indicators of underlying valvular pathologies. We will examine the following characteristics to facilitate a comprehensive understanding of murmurs. Their timings and duration within a cardiac cycle. Pitch. Intensity. Location. And the presence or absence of radiation. When evaluating a murmur in clinical practice, we focus on all these characteristics. By the end of this video, we'll show you an example of a murmur, where we'll combine all these different features in describing a murmur comprehensively. So, make sure to stick around to see how it all comes together. We will now talk about each characteristic one by one. Now let's start with the timing and duration of murmurs. As part of the auscultation process, it's crucial to palpate the carotid artery while examining the precordium. This enables us to correlate various heart sounds with distinct phases of the cardiac cycle. By determining the precise timing of these sounds within the cycle, we can classify murmurs as systolic, diastolic, or continuous. This classification is instrumental in refining diagnoses. Systolic murmurs happen during ventricular systole, between the first and second heart sounds, and coincide with the carotid pulse. Diastolic murmurs are heard during diastole, after the second heart sound, and before the first heart sound, just after the carotid pulse upstroke. Continuous murmurs are heard throughout the cardiac cycle. While not typically originating from the heart, they are included here for completeness. Examples include murmurs in patent ductus arteriosus and murmurs audible over an arteriovenous fistula. After broadly classifying murmurs into these three categories, we can subclassify them based on where they occur during the cardiac cycle and how long they last. Let us step by step show you how. First, let's focus on systolic murmurs. These can be further divided into three types, ejection systolic, pan-systolic, and late systolic murmurs. Ejection systolic murmurs start at the beginning of systole and peak in mid-systole. They gradually rise and then decrease in intensity, and therefore are also called crescendo-decrescendo murmur. This type of murmur is typically associated with aortic stenosis. Pan-systolic murmurs span the entire systole with a constant intensity. They are audible in conditions like mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, and ventricular septal defect. Now the last subcategory of systolic murmurs, late systolic murmur. This murmur begins in the middle of systole and extends until the second heart sound. These murmurs can be heard with mitral leaflet prolapse.
Let's move on to diastolic murmurs, which can be categorized as early diastolic, mid-diastolic, and late diastolic murmurs. Early diastolic murmurs occur at the beginning of ventricular diastole, just after S2. They are typically associated with aortic or pulmonary regurgitation. Incompetent valves cannot prevent blood from flowing back into the ventricles, thus producing turbulence and an early diastolic murmur. Mid-diastolic murmurs are low-pitched, occurring during passive ventricular filling. It is caused by turbulent blood flow through a stenosed atrioventricular valve. They are often found in mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis, which is relatively rare. The last subcategory of diastolic murmur is late diastolic murmur. It is more famously known as presystolic accentuation. This murmur is also featured in mitral or tricuspid stenoses. It occurs during the last one-third of diastole, when the atria contract and push blood forcefully through a stenosed mitral or tricuspid valve. This accentuation is lost in atrial fibrillation due to ineffective atrial contraction. Finally, there's the continuous murmur. As mentioned earlier, it does not originate in the heart, but rather noted in vascular abnormalities, like patent ductus arteriosus, or over AV fistula. It's also known as a machinery murmur, and is heard during both systole and diastole. To recap, the main types of murmurs encountered during a cardiovascular examination are ejection systolic, pan-systolic, late systolic, early diastolic, mid-diastolic, late diastolic, and continuous murmurs. Now let's discuss murmurs, categorized by their pitch. There are two main types, high-pitched and low-pitched murmurs. High-pitched murmurs are easily audible using the diaphragm of a stethoscope. Common examples include murmurs of aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation. On the other hand, low-pitched murmurs require attentive listening with the bell of a stethoscope. An example is the mid-diastolic rumble of mitral stenosis. Let's move on to discussing murmur intensity. According to the Levine grading system, murmur intensity is categorized into six grades, ranging from grade 1 to grade 6. Grade 1 indicates a very faint murmur, 
only detectable through careful auscultation in a quiet environment, whereas grade 6 signifies the loudest murmur, audible even when the stethoscope is slightly lifted off the chest. Systolic murmurs can reach up to grade 6 intensity, while diastolic murmurs typically do not exceed grade 3 intensity. Innocent or flow murmurs also fall below grade 3 in intensity. For a more detailed breakdown, please refer to our video on this topic. You can find the link in the description below. Let's proceed to classify murmurs based on their location. During a precordial examination, it's crucial to auscultate all cardiac areas. Diastolic murmurs are confined to specific areas. For instance, the murmur of mitral stenosis is heard at the apex, while aortic regurgitation is audible over the left sternal edge. On the other hand, systolic murmurs, being louder, tend to be heard over a broader precordial area. Therefore, pinpoint where it's loudest and note any associated radiation. This brings us to the last feature which is the radiation of the murmur. Only systolic murmurs exhibit radiation, flowing in the direction of blood across the valve. Mitral regurgitation murmurs spread from the apex to the left axilla. Aortic stenosis murmurs extend from the right second intercostal space to the neck. And lastly, VSD murmurs travel from the left sternal edge to the right side of the sternum. After this video, as promised earlier, let's put all the features together in a clinical scenario. Suppose, it is a young patient diagnosed with mitral stenosis secondary to rheumatic heart disease. On the cardiac auscultation of a young patient, who is a known case of rheumatic heart disease, notable findings include a loud first heart sound. An opening snap follows S2, and then a low-pitched, mid-diastolic murmur of grade 2 by 6 intensity. Additionally, there is a pre-systolic accentuation of the murmur. The murmur is best audible at the cardiac apex, with the patient lying in the left lateral decubitus position and breath held in expiration. With this, we have come to the end of the topic. As we conclude this video and our cardiac auscultation series, we want to express our gratitude for your participation. We've put a lot of effort into creating this content and hope you found it valuable. Your feedback is important to us, so please take a moment to share your thoughts in the comments below. Help us reach more people by sharing these videos with your friends, liking them, and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Your support is greatly appreciated.